Hi, I'm Mike from SinFX, and today we'll be going over the delete node. So let's drop down a geometry container and get started. Hop inside and give ourselves a delete. Now right off the bat, you can see it's throwing an error at you, and that's because it's expecting some geometry to delete. So you can drop down Tommy and plug him in. All right, so coming up here to the parameters, you can see that the delete node does support Houdini's group functionality. So if you only wanted to delete a specific selection of primitives, you can. So now we can only delete the tank top. And coming down to the operation parameter, this allows you to control whether or not it's deleting your selection or everything except your selection. So that's what's going on there. Now we're deleting everything except the tank top. So let's tick this back to normal and remove our group. So underneath that is the entity parameter, and this just controls which class of geometry is getting deleted. Right now it's set to primitives, but it can also only delete points as well as edges. Now underneath that is this geometry type, and this lets you get even more specific with which kinds of geometry you want to delete. Everything from a Bezier curve all the way down to a volume. Now it is important to note that the vast majority of these selections only work when your entity is set to primitives, so that's a good thing to be aware of. On top of that, this geometry type parameter only works down here in this number tab. So everything that goes on here works well with the geometry type, but it does not work with your group selection. So let's experiment a little bit with what that means. So if we come down here to this pattern and we remove this exclamation mark, we're basically telling Houdini to delete everything, all geometry types. And sure enough, we can see that's what happens. But if we come back up here and we change all types to volume, now we're telling it to delete all of the volumes in the scene. But there aren't any volumes, there's just Tommy. And so it's really not deleting anything. But the same way, we can come back and change this to polygon, and now it's deleting all the polygons, including Tommy. And so that's what's going on there. You can experiment with all of these different types and get some pretty interesting effects. Now on top of working with the geometry type, the pattern operation up here also accepts math as an input. So say you wanted to delete a primitive whose number was 200 plus 500, we can just type that in. And now, of course, this reads out to 700, so we're deleting primitive number 700. But it doesn't look like we're, we've actually deleted anything. So we can come up here to our operation, take this to delete non-selected, and then press G to focus in on anything in the scene. And you can see that we're left with a single primitive, that being primitive 700. So that's what you can use this for. Now the next operation is delete by range. So we can zoom back out. Now this looks like it's just deleting a random se uh, selection of polygons, but what's actually happening is it's selecting one of every two, and then it's deleting that. So as we tick this number up, we need to make sure to set our operation back to only delete selected. So as we tick this number up, we're deleting less and less polygons. And that's because now it's deleting one of every three, one of every four, one of every five, and so that's what's going on there. It's just looping over a set number of polygons and deleting the selection. So we can do two of every five, three of every five, and so on and so forth. All right, now past that, we can change the operation to delete by expression. And right now it's deleting everything because it's set to one, which is just saying, well, delete. But if we set it to zero, now it's saying don't delete anything. You're also able to come into this parameter here and actually type in vex into it. So let's try that out. Let's say at primitive number modulo 5 equals 0. And just like the range, we're now deleting a random selection of polygons. Now it might be hard to wrap your head around this and what it's doing if you aren't familiar with vex, but we're basically saying to take the primitive number of each of our different primitives and divide it by 5. And if that result has a remainder of 0, then it's deleting that primitive. So that's to say we're only deleting primitives that are multiples of 5. And if we come back to our range, you can see that it's literally doing the exact same operation by selecting one of every five. It's only deleting the multiples of five. And so that's what's going on there. Now coming over here to the bounding volume tab, let's untick this and turn this on. This one's pretty straightforward. You're just given a bounding volume and then everything inside it gets deleted. So as we move this up, you can see that the delete selection updates in real time. Now, while we're here, it's also important to note these two parameters down here. You can also see that they don't disappear as you change your tabs, and that's because they apply to every single operation in the node. One of them is delete unused groups, and this removes any groups that have been brought down to a population of zero by your deletion. So if we come up here to Tommy, you can see that we have a pants group down there. Right in, it's one of the five prim groups right next to his eyes and tank top. It's currently occupied by about 12,500 primitives. But down here, 
we don't have that pants group anymore. And that's because we've deleted all of the primitives that were inside the group with this bounding box. You're also given the option to keep the points from your deletion. So right now we're only deleting the primitives. So if we tick this on, you can see that all of the points that were there at their intersections over here are being kept. And so this is a good option to be aware of. Turn this off. Now you're also given the ability to change the bounding type from box to sphere. And this does exactly what it seems like. It changes the volume to a sphere and back again. All right, in the next video, we're going to be covering the normal and the degenerate tabs.